This story begins in 1830 on the southernmost tip of Maryland. Although there are no photographs of the original structure, the first Point Lookout lighthouse was one and a half stories tall and a third of the size of the structure you see here. The much smaller original Point Lookout was built for $3,350. In 1883, the second story was added, allowing home for two keepers and their families so that lighthouse work could be shared. On September 20th, 1830, the first keeper, James Davis, lit the light. And when Raymond Hartzell completed his duties on January 11th, 1966, Point Lookout said goodbye to its last keeper of the light. Point Lookout had a total of 19 keepers, men and women. William Yeatman served the longest term, from 1871 until his death in 1908. The property has been owned by the U.S. Navy, civilians, and currently by the state of Maryland. The structure has been renovated and repainted many times over its life. In 2018, efforts began to restore Point Lookout to its 1920s appearance. This included interior and exterior renovations of the main building, as well as these buoy and coal sheds. Exhibits are being installed so that visitors can learn about the lighthouse, the life of its keepers, and the Chesapeake Bay. But my visit to this historical lighthouse centers around it being considered America's most haunted lighthouse. I've always found such labels fascinating. What makes a location the most haunted? I suspect it has something to do with the number of paranormal encounters and experiences compared to other similar structures or locations. The late Edwin Warfield Bitzel, author of Point Lookout, Prison Camp for Confederates, knew why the lighthouse had that label. As his book title states, a nearby 20 acres of ground was once a Civil War prison camp. It started as a hospital to treat Union wounded in the summer of 1862. Early 1863, a small number of mostly Southern Maryland Confederate prisoners were confined to the hospital grounds. Following the Battle of Gettysburg, a prison camp was built for Confederate soldiers, and the camp was named Camp Hoffman. Capable of holding 10,000 prisoners of war, with three forts protecting the prison, and its isolated location, escape was highly unlikely. In September 1863, 4,000 Confederates were being held at the camp. By December, 9,000. By June 1864, 20,000 souls were captive. At the end of the Civil War in April 1865, of the more than 52,000 Confederates that were imprisoned, possibly as many as 8,000, would never leave the camp alive. Other documented deaths on or near the property include keepers and at least 60 deaths from exploding or sinking ships, including some corpses washing ashore. As you might imagine, these tragedies are tied to countless paranormal experiences occurring in or around the lighthouse. Some of these accounts a man's spirit from one of the ship incidents has knocked on the door of the lighthouse during storms. He sometimes appears on the beach before big storms, hearing of heavy footsteps, books flying off shelves, bad and rotten odors in various rooms. Many unexplained images have been captured at the lighthouse. One of the most stunning photographs show Nancy Stallings, a medium with the Maryland Committee for Cyclical Research, standing in the middle of a bedroom. To our left, a foggy form of a man, seemingly dressed as a soldier, 
with a sash and one leg casually crossed over the other, appears to be leaning into the wall. He wasn't noticed until the picture was developed. Teenagers driving out of the park near sunset stop a park ranger to share that they saw a man dressed as a Civil War era soldier carrying a long rifle with a bayonet on his shoulder patrolling inside the fenced lighthouse. A park ranger reported that he saw a Confederate soldier a dozen different times running across the road near where the camp hospital once stood. A group of fishermen thought that they had struck a man with their vehicle early one morning. They all felt the thump of the collision. Once exiting the vehicle, they could not find the man nor damage to their vehicle. Another park employee saw a field of white tents lined up in the middle of the road. Now one of the more fascinating things about Point Lookout, besides the fact that it was in operation for 135 years, first opening in 1830, was that Dr. Hans Holzer and his team came here and conducted an investigation about 20 years ago. And then in their findings, about 24 different EVPs were captured. When I recorded this stand-up, I knew that there were other visitors to the park all around me. It made conducting an investigation very difficult due to the noise contamination. The lighthouse was also completely locked up, as well as no power to any of the buildings. However, if you listen closely to this stand-up, something unusual has been recorded. I'll play it again to the point of the sound and repeat it. Be sure and use headphones for this. 1930 was that Dr. Hans Holzer and his team Hans Holzer and his team. Hans Holzer and his team. Dr. Hans Holzer and his team came. Did you hear it? Clearly, there's a human female voice that's right next to me, right next to the camera. It doesn't sound like any voice in the background. So, we tried to enhance it. <laughs> We even reached out to our friends at Road Trip Paranormal in Kansas, and their audio guy attempted to enhance it. Team 30 was that Dr. Hans Holzer and his team. Hans Holzer and his team. Hans Holzer and his team. Dr. Hans Holzer and his team came. They agreed it was a female voice, but could not determine what's being said. I reached out to our friend Alexandra, the daughter of the late Dr. Hans Holzer, about this evidence. She wanted to review it. She couldn't make out the words either. Lastly, I shared the clip with psychic artist Angela Boley, who quickly thought that she was hearing the phrase, I give up. She gathered it was a young woman named Maggie, who was exhausted at trying to get my attention. She was on a double date and the four were sailing. Some rough weather blew in and she was knocked unconscious. Her companions were rescued, but she drowned. In our research, we could not find a victim named Maggie or information on such an incident, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. Is there anyone here? You can touch that box again. Angela mentioned that Maggie would find our tools fascinating and would enjoy hearing herself speak through them. It seems we must return one day to America's most haunted lighthouse. Perhaps Maggie will introduce herself. Reporting for Unexplained Cases, I'm Rick Garner.